Hello and welcome back. Now that you're familiar with widgets and menus, it's time to learn about themes in WordPress. The theme you're using largely determines the look and feel of your website, including the layout, colors, typography, widget and menu styling, and more. We are currently using the default WordPress theme called 2014, which is geared towards building online magazines, news sites, and blogs. You can access the theme subpanel by going to the dashboard, hover over appearance, and then clicking on themes. In the themes subpanel, you can customize, install, activate, remove, and edit themes. Themes you have already installed are listed here, and the themes you are currently using is indicated by the active text as well as being highlighted. Clicking on a theme will bring up the theme information panel, allowing you to see more details about the theme. This information panel also gives you options to customize your theme, edit widgets, menus, as well as changing the header and background of this theme. Arrows at the top allow you to cycle through the information panel for themes you have installed. When you are viewing details for another theme, you can activate or live preview the theme. Clicking on the live preview button will bring up the customizer on the left and a real-time preview of the theme on the right. Live preview enables you to view what your site will look like with that particular theme applied. When you're live previewing a theme, you're able to interact with all elements of your website so you can get a good idea of how the theme renders your posts and pages or how the theme handles your site menu and widgets. You can customize the settings or look and feel of this theme by using the customizer on the left. One thing to remember is depending on the theme you're using, you may have different customization options and there may be more or less options in the customizer panel. We'll close the preview window for now and learn more about customization options for the 2014 theme we're currently using. Click on customize. As you can see, this theme offers more customization options than the previous theme. Under site title and tagline, you can enable or disable it, as well as editing both. If you have a header image, then hiding the site title and tagline may be suitable. Remember, any changes you make in the customizer will be reflected in real time within Live Preview. You can choose a different color for the site title and change the background color of your site. You have the option of displaying a header image across the top of your website. To set a header image, click Add New Image. You can choose any existing images from the media library or you can upload another header image. Suggested image dimensions is informing you that a header image with the size of 1260 pixels wide by 240 pixels high will display optimally on the site. If you're uploading an image with the correct dimensions, WordPress will use that image as is. If your image dimensions are not the recommended size, WordPress will let you crop the image to the correct size before displaying it as a header. We're going to upload a header image. Fill in the title and alt text, then hit select and crop. Position the crop box, and when you're happy, click crop image. The header panel will now show the image we just uploaded, and this will be reflected in the live preview as well. You can also upload several header images, and when you have more than one header image, you can choose the header image you want to use by clicking on the image, or you can choose to randomize, meaning WordPress will display a random header image every time your website is loaded. You can also upload a background image to your site. Simply click the arrow, drag and drop or select the image you want to use, then click open. After your image is uploaded, you will get a few options. Background repeat refers to whether you'd like the background image to repeat itself if your site is viewed on a bigger screen. We'll leave it on no repeat. Background position refers to the anchor point of the image, and you can see the image move when I select left, center, and right. We'll leave this on center. 
Lastly, the attachment options refers to the behavior of the background image when you scroll. If the scroll option is chosen, the image will move with the scrolling. If fixed is chosen, the background image will be static. If you prefer the scroll option, you'll notice when the image runs out, the background becomes white. There are two solutions to this. The first one is by changing background repeat to tile. As you can see, the image now repeats itself. When you choose tile, the image will repeat itself both vertically and horizontally. Obviously, if you have a background image that is not repeat friendly, meaning if it has clear edges, then repeating is probably not the best idea. The second solution to this problem is changing the background color. We'll set background repeat to no repeat, then expand the colors pane. We can now change the background color to match the bottom of the background image, so the transition between image and color is less jarring. We'll reset the background color by clicking default. For now, we'll set the background attachment to fixed. Under the navigation pane, you're able to assign menus to certain locations. We've covered this in a previous video, but we'll recap quickly. This theme supports two menu locations, the primary menu at the top and a secondary menu on the left. We can choose which menus appear in these two locations by expanding the dropdown and selecting a menu. We've assigned our menus in a previous video, so we'll leave it for now. Clicking on widgets will bring up the widgets pane where you can add, edit, rearrange and delete a widget. We learned about widgets in an earlier video, but we'll do a quick recap. This theme has three widgetized areas, the left and right sidebars and the footer area. To add a widget, choose the area you'd like the widget to reside in, then click add a widget. I'll add a text widget into the content sidebar. The text widget now appears on the bottom of the sidebar. I'd like to move it to the top. To rearrange, simply drag and drop or you can click reorder, then click the up and down arrows. To move this widget into a different widgetized area, click the diagonal arrow, choose a new area, then click move. I'll move this widget to the primary sidebar, then rearrange so that this widget is at the top. Remember to click done when you're finished. To edit a widget, simply expand it by clicking the arrow to the right and make any necessary changes. To delete a widget, expand it, then click delete. Let's go back to the customizer. The static front page option allows you to control what content is displayed on your homepage. By default, this theme displays your latest blog posts. To set a static page as the homepage, choose Static Page, then from the drop down menu, select a page you'd like to use as the front page. You'll also want to select a page to display all of your blog posts. A posts page is just a blank page with a title, and when you set it as a posts page, all of your blog posts will display on that page. As you can see, the front page is now a static page, and all blog posts now appear on the blog page. Another neat feature of the 2014 theme is the ability to have featured posts. Featured posts are posts that receive extra emphasis and appear in a grid or slide layout at the top of your homepage. Tag name refers to a tag you'd like to use to tell WordPress a particular post is a featured post. For example, if the tag specified here is awesome, then any posts tagged with the word awesome will be featured posts. I've gone ahead and added featured tags to a few of my existing posts, so we are going to specify featured as our tag. As soon as I specify the tag, you can see posts appearing in the featured content area. In the layout drop down menu, you can select a layout you prefer. 
a grid layout or a slider layout. The checkbox at the bottom refers to whether you'd like the feature tag to appear in tag clouds on the front end. When you're happy with the theme settings, simply click Save and Publish, then exit the theme customizer. To install a new theme, click the large Add New Theme button, or you can click Add New at the top. You'll be taken to the WordPress.org theme browser, where there are thousands of free themes to choose from. From the top, you can choose to browse Featured Themes, Popular Themes, and Latest Themes. You can also browse themes that fits the criteria you set in the filter. You can specify colors, layout, features, or subject. After you've specified the criteria, apply filters by clicking the button. All themes that fit the criteria you specified will be displayed. After you find a theme you're interested in, click on the thumbnail to open a live preview. On the left, you can read more about the theme, and on the right, you're able to preview how the theme might look on your website. Just like before, the live preview is interactive, meaning you're able to hover over and click elements of your website as well as viewing posts and pages. Arrow buttons at the top let you cycle through different themes, and when you find a theme you'd like to use, click the Install button at the top of the left-hand pane. WordPress will now download and install the theme package, and then you can choose to preview the theme, activate the theme, or return to the theme installer. Live Preview displays what your site will look like with the new theme activated, and just like before, you can edit theme settings in the customizer. When you're finished making changes, click Save and Activate. If you prefer to activate the theme without making any changes, you can do so by clicking on Activate. Once you have activated the new theme, you'll be taken back to the theme subpanel, and the new theme will now be highlighted and active as indicated by the text. Go ahead and preview the site. This doesn't look too shabby, but we are going to switch back to 2014. Go back to the theme subpanel. To reactivate a theme, simply hover over the thumbnail, then click Activate. If you have purchased a theme from other sources, chances are you'll be given a zip archive containing the theme. You can use the upload function to install your theme. From the Themes subpanel, click Add New. Instead of choosing a theme from the browser, click Upload Theme. Navigate to where the theme zip file is and upload. Same as before, you can live preview the theme, activate the theme, or return to the theme installer. To remove a theme, click on the theme thumbnail to bring up the theme details pane, then click delete at the bottom right corner. One thing to note is you cannot delete a theme that is currently active, so make sure to switch to another theme first before deleting. It's also worth noting, depending on the theme you're using, some customizer options may have a sub-panel under Appearance. I'll show you what I mean. If I go to the customizer for the theme 2014, you can see the header and background image options are also accessible under Appearance. By now you should be familiar with how themes work in WordPress. Next, we'll be learning about working with plugins. <laughs>